Hello there. Tutorials are great, but remember to learn how to fish. And I know that sounds odd at first, but I promise it will help you remember it. And it's a saying that I half invented, but completely live by. All the time I see really promising developers, really talented people get stuck in this place called Tutorial Hell. And it upsets me because I want to see these really brilliant people do well at something that I also love to do and not get held back by getting stuck in this place. This place called Tutorial Hell. Oh wait, I already did that, but yeah, Tutorial Hell. I would also ask you to subscribe at this point in the video, but I'm not going to as I prefer to use reverse psychology. Whether you're in formal education, self-taught or whatever, a video or blog tutorial is usually the first point of reference you'll go to when you're trying to do something on your own for the first time. But they have this problem and it's a pretty big one that you might have experienced yourself or seen other people experiencing. It goes like this. You do a tutorial on a new topic, let's say you start c -sharp scripting for Unity for the first time, and well done, you've already done more than 99% of people by starting. Then, after the tutorial, you go to do something by yourself completely from scratch, but you feel completely lost and don't know what to do. So, you do another tutorial, because the first one got you good results. But again, once you finish that tutorial, you feel unable to use any of the new skills you've just learned. So, you do another tutorial. From what I've seen, this can lead to one of two different places. The first is that you just do this forever and then give up at some point, feeling like you never make any progress, which I think is really sad, which is part of the reason why I've decided to make this video. The second is something that tends to happen to people that are just beyond that beginner stage. Every time they go to add a new feature to their game or project, they have to rely on a tutorial in order to bring that feature to life. What this results in is a Frankenstein's monster of a code base, where it's literally literally just spaghetti of loads of tutorials stuck together. This then means that as you get further into a project, it becomes easier to get lost and unsure of what you're doing. As a quick midpoint disclaimer here, I want to really explicitly say that there's nothing wrong with tutorials themselves. They can get you moving in a good direction and act as a really good starting point for most people generally. But here's where I wanted to bring in an analogy to help me explain myself. If you give someone a fish, they'll eat for a day. But if you teach them to go fishing, they'll eat for the rest of their lives. Tutorials are being handed a fish on a plate. And that's fine in basically all circumstances, as long as we know that we are being handed a fish on a plate. Because what is important to realise is that a tutorial can actually give us the illusion of progress when we complete them. Someone can think that they're progressing a lot faster than they actually are because they finish tutorial after tutorial and get fish after fish. And whilst they may have been making some progress, they think that they're actually making a lot more because they keep getting all these fish. And it can become really tempting to just keep doing more and more tutorials because you know there's a guaranteed fish at the end of the tutorial as long as you follow it step by step. However, throughout this whole process, you may never actually learn how to go fishing yourself. So when you're handed a rod and told to cast out the line, you don't know where to start. So what's the solution to all of this? How do you get out of tutorial hell and really get the hang of programming or whatever it is? Well, the first step, as I've mentioned, is to realise whether you're actually doing it. Because remember, it's okay to use tutorials every now and then, but it's probably not the best if you're relying on them and using them all the time and don't feel like you can do anything without them. If you are stuck with tutorials, then you need to move on to the next step. And this step is realising that it is actually okay to feel lost when you're trying to learn a new skill. Both programming and game dev are really complicated skills that take a long time to learn, and I'm talking years, so it's okay to feel lost many times while you're trying to learn them. Even the most experienced developers I know feel unsure about what they're doing a lot of the time. They're just so experienced they're really used to that feeling and know that if they keep working at the problems they can work them out. Everyone just has to hit the run button, preemptively expect errors to appear and hope for the best. So with that out of the way, you're going to want to make sure that when you do watch tutorials to get started with something, you're actually trying intentionally really hard to understand what's going on in them, not just following them line by line. There is a really distinct difference between just witnessing a tutorial and actually understanding it. 
Instead of just copying the lines of code word for word, maybe try changing a few bits about it. Change that variable to something else and see what happens. Maybe try adding or changing around a few lines of code to intentionally alter the outcome of what happens when it runs. While you're learning, check that each new thing that you add to your project actually does what you think it should do. Don't just base what you're doing on your assumptions about what you think it's doing. You're going to want to keep building and building on this until your understanding gets better and better. And then at some point, you're going to want to start doing things by yourself. So instead of consulting tutorials, you should start consulting the documentation. Documentation. This is essentially where you graduate to after building up those initial bits of knowledge from the tutorials you followed. Some tools have really good documentation and yes, some tools have bad documentation, but it should start to become the first default place you go to check when you want to understand how something really truly works. The reason for this is that the documentation is usually written by the people who made the thing you're trying to use. And so, in my opinion, a lot of the times there couldn't be a better knowledge base to check your understanding from. Documentation can be really overwhelming at first, and that is understandable. They usually come in the form of these really huge walls of text that are not user-friendly at all, and don't have a teacher telling you what to do at each stage. But once you have the initial familiarity of the tool from the tutorials you've been following, you should be able to pick out parts of the documentation that you do actually understand. And from there, you can start to check what you're doing against the documentation more and more, and it becomes easier to actually use documentation than follow a 20 minute tutorial trying to pick out the one bit of information you need from it. For me, it is the point at which I start referencing the documentation instead of trying to search through tutorials that I feel like I really start to understand the piece of software that I'm using. It is the start of independent problem solving and thinking because it places you in the driver's seat. Documentation won't tell you exactly what to do like a tutorial does, but it will always be there to help you with what you want to create, not what someone else has already made. So the key point of this video is to still use tutorials, but learn how to fish and also sit in the driver's seat. Maybe that's mixing too many analogies, I don't know. The next few videos I do will be of this sort of style, where I just try to communicate an idea or opinion that will hopefully help you become a better programmer or game dev. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, as that would be very kind. Follow me on Twitter for updates on my game project, Project Drifter, and join the Discord if you feel like it. And with that, until next time, goodbye.